All right, here is the little video that I promised um, because the technology didn't work in the class yesterday. Um, this graph is taken from the Excel homework, but it's a little bit different, so I want to explain that. Uh, but before I do, let me just note notationally, in the previous video, which was done with PowerPoint, effort, high effort was called E-bar. Um, here, because we're not doing any integration, I've just made the, the high effort E. So E is the um, symbol for uh, taking effort, not E-bar. Uh, so this blue curve is from the previous Excel homework and is the aggregate no shirking condition. And this downward sloping curve is supposed to represent the market demand for labor. Um, what is different is this horizontal line at height w bar plus e um, that we haven't done before and this red curve um, and what i want you to think about the red curve is that that's actually the supply curve um, but that's what i want to explain before i do that however let's note in the shapiro stiglitz model the equilibrium is determined by the aggregate no shirking condition where that intersects the demand curve so that would be the market equilibrium wage and that this would determine the market equilibrium employment this curve has a vertical distance that is constant between it and the aggregate no shirking condition and i'm labeling it rvu plus e um rvu if you will is the um flow that a unemployed worker will earn and it reflects earning immediately w bar but then having the possibility of accessing a good job into the future um, this is kind of a odd curve to draw because the wage at which uh, it will access a good job in the future in this graph is determined by the aggregate no shirking condition. So the assumption is if we were over here on this RBU plus E curve, that when the employee actually lands a job, that will be the wage up on the blue curve. That's how this red curve is plotted. It has a constant vertical distance. It's a little bit of an optical illusion because the horizontal distance is getting closer and closer, but the vertical distance is constant and that constant represents the job rent. So workers earn a job rent relative to their opportunity wage plus the disutility of effort. Um, and that's what this picture is showing. Um, and if you took the expectation of those job rents over the lifetime of the worker, knowing that the worker is going to separate with a certain um, rate that was called B in the paper, um, that expectation would be the reputation of a worker who um, is currently putting forth effort. That is, it would be the difference between VE and VU. That's what the integral would be. This picture is showing the flow difference between being employed and being unemployed. Um, and as a result, if you were to do a consumer surp excuse me, a social surplus calculation, what you can see is that the actual social surplus should be the area under the demand curve above the um, red curve. Um, and so the equilibrium that we get in the Shapiro Stiglitz model does not maximize the social surplus. One can do better socially um, by increasing employment, by boosting this demand curve in some way, perhaps by having government subsidized wages, for example, that would shift the curve out and increase employment, and that would actually raise the surplus. So that's all I wanted to say on this topic. Hopefully um, that will make things a little bit clearer. I'm sorry it didn't work out in class yesterday.